What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video on Son of Vlogs. If you don't already know me, my name is Winston and I'm about nine and a half weeks post double jaw surgery, which I had on June 3rd, uh, 2019. So, uh, I've been making a lot of videos so far about my process and my procedure, healing, recovery, things I've done before surgery. But now that I've actually had the surgery and I'm pretty far along in my recovery, I want to make a video for you guys about the five most important things you guys need to do before actually having the surgery. Uh, this is a list that I put together. Now it might be different for some other people who maybe uh, tell you different things, but this is what I think is probably the most important steps that you need to do before having jaw surgery. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Number one. Number one most important thing, and I think this is gonna be in order for me. Number one most important thing for you to do is find the right surgeon, okay? That might be pretty obvious, but I feel like a lot of people, and, and even myself, um, you, you're not really sure, ever really sure if the right surgeon is the right surgeon, but what you will know and what you will be able to find out if it's the right surgeon is by getting a number of consultations. So going through the jaw surgery process is a facial surgery, right? Basically from here down, your face is being reconstructed. You wanna make sure that the number one thing that doesn't happen is you don't need any reconstructive surgeries. So you don't need any revision surgeries. Um, so I would say one of the most important things is finding a surgeon that you're comfortable with, that is reputable, has a good reputation and ask around, ask your dentist, ask your orthodontist, ask um, family friends that are doctors, stuff like that. Look up online and see if there are any reviews. It's not really a thing for that for surgeons. It's not like, oh, this is the best surgeon for jaw surgery in the country. It's not really like a list for that. Like there are restaurants, for example, or hotels. But what you'll want to do is you want to go and find the surgeons that uh, you think are probably the best, uh, whether they're in your area, maybe even out of state. I flew, I live in California now, I'm from the East Coast. Um, I flew and saw a surgeon from uh, in New York, in New York City. I saw a surgeon in Beverly Hills. I saw a surgeon in just LA. Um, and I saw a surgeon up in Santa Barbara. So I went and saw four surgeons before actually selecting one and figuring out whether it would work for me. Um, so definitely, I would say one of the most important things is find a surgeon that you know is good and that you're gonna be comfortable with. I think that's probably one of the, the biggest things is um, being, being comfortable with your surgeon, understanding uh, his process, their team, and having the trust in them. Because again, it's, it's a scary thing, it's your face, and you wanna make sure that it, it goes well to the best possible you know, outcome it can. Um, the other thing I wanted you to, to mention is when you're finding a surgeon, getting consultations with numerous surgeons is really good because a lot of them actually have different methods. They'll tell you how they're gonna cut the jaw and it's different from one guy. Uh, one guy will say, oh yeah, we don't actually use rubber bands or we don't put you in a splint. You'll be eating by week six. So it's a very good way to compare uh, how different surgeons are doing it. And maybe you find a really good one. Maybe you're going to a really good surgeon. Um, uh, via, like for example, one of them is Dr. Gunson in Santa Barbara. Maybe you go to him and he gives you this whole layout and a bunch of packets and pieces of papers like he did. He took photos for me, printed out mapping, 3D stuff. And I end up taking that to other different consultations and saying, hey, look, this is what Dr. Gunson told me. Do you know who he is? And, and would you do something similar like this? Or what would you diff do differently? So compare, contrast, and finding the right surgeon is obviously extremely important. Number two, what happens after you're looking at surgeons and the kind of the next progression in that is finding out how you're gonna pay for the surgery. Um, obviously that's very important and personally this I can relate to this because I ended up switching surgeons because of primary well, financial re reasons and then also closer to home and so, some other like smaller things that I just figured made sense for me. Um, but you have the choice of, if you, if you have the means, going to a private uh, surgeon like Dr. Gunson in Santa Barbara, he's really good, he's world renowned. Um, that's actually who I was gonna have the surgery with, but he is private, so he doesn't take insurance. And if, and if your parents or you are willing to kind of pay that money, then I think it would be worth it, 100%. Um, my orthodontist even said that if he was doing the surgery himself, um, he would go with Dr. Gunson rather than the team that I went with. But for me, it didn't work because it was just a little too expensive and it made a little more sense to go with a different team who I also did a lot of research with, made sure they were good. Um, probably wasn't as comfortable to be honest, but I got there once I asked all the questions. Like I, I straight up asked them like very honestly, like listen, I'm a little nervous about this. I'm scared that you guys are like this and not like that and blah, blah, blah. And they gave me answers. So 
um, finding out how you're gonna pay for it. Uh, if you have an insurance, looking for a surgeon that's in network or at a university hospital, I ended up doing my surgery at UCLA. Uh, it was in network for me, so it was covered. Um, that's obviously a really important thing, so definitely make sure you're getting on that. It also takes a long time for the surgery to get approved by insurance, so make sure that the team you're with has an insurance coordinator and they're on top of that. And uh, this, takes, this takes weeks, so make sure you're doing all this kind of stuff before surgery so that when it gets to surgery or you don't have the surgery, it's not like, oh, who's paying for this or here's an anesthesia bill for 6,000. Uh, that shouldn't happen. Okay, number three, notify your job. Understand that double jaw surgery is a long process, right? I got my braces on January, what was it, 2018, and now it's August 2019, and my ortho told me another year of braces, so June 2020. Okay, so that's two and a half years. It's a long process. Um, notify your job or figure out and plan when you're gonna get the surgery. If you're at work, tell your work like very far ahead of time. I told them like almost a year ago, like, hey, I'm thinking about having the surgery, and this is where my head is at in a year and I, this is something I'm gonna have to get done. Like even a year out, I had no dates, nothing. I didn't have a surgeon pick. I was just like, this is gonna come up. And uh, understand that the surgery, you know, it's a long recovery. You, you could expect to be out of work if you're having double jaw surgery like me from four to six weeks. I went back after the fifth week. I could have gone after the fourth, um, but it was July 4th week. It was very quiet. My boss had just taken another week to recover. So I really appreciate that and that was awesome. But. It takes a long time. You're either gonna be out of work for a long period of time. Can you afford to do that? Make sure you're planning on that. Are you a student? Uh, when are you gonna get the jaw surgery? I mean, it's gonna hinder your classes. You're not gonna be able to go to class if you're in school and you get the surgery. You're gonna have to go home probably three to four weeks. Once you get the splint out and you can talk, I'd say you're probably good, safe to safe to go on your own. I was probably be able, I was probably able to be self-sufficient by after the third week. I didn't need my parents, stuff like that. I could make my own soups and waters and stuff. And I could probably do it before that, but it was just nice having them while I was still like in that intense recovery phase. The first two weeks, your stitches are still in there. They're starting to come out blah, blah, blah. Um, so make sure you're planning for that. If you're a student, maybe do it in the summertime. Um, if you're at work, make sure you tell your boss that it's gonna take a couple weeks out of work. Um, figure out when kind of the best time for you um, to, to get the surgery done. It's, that's pretty important because, yeah, it's like it kind of puts a pause on your life as your body heals from this serious surgery. So the fourth most important thing that I would recommend for anybody going to have double jaw surgery that they need to do is prepare mentally, prepare physically, prepare emotionally. Now, I made a video on that a couple weeks ago. Um, it was actually before my surgery. It was about how I personally was preparing. So if you're interested in looking on that, go back to my videos and you'll see how I kind of prepared. But to give you a quick summary, um, the surgery is intense, right? Uh, like I said in just a minute ago, you know, it, it, it covers two years of your life. You're gonna be in braces. You're gonna have a, a very serious surgery to your face. Now, it's an intensive surgery, but they do it a lot. So I wouldn't say, don't be too scared about the surgery and what could happen because uh, the surgery is pretty routine. There's very advanced uh, computer programs and stuff like that to map out the surgery, so it goes well. So I wouldn't worry too much about that, but just understand that it's a big surgery and uh, understand emotionally that you're gonna be home a lot. You're gonna be recovering. You're not gonna see yourself, um, you know, your appearance is gonna be different possibly. Um, especially in the beginning when you're swollen, that's for sure. But I mean also, you know, six months after, you might look different and you're not used to that. I mean, I still look at myself and I'm just, I'm starting to realize like, wow, I think I actually look really good and I'm, I'm proud of the way I look. And uh, without sounding like uh, too narcissistic, but, um, you know, it, you have to prepare emotionally and get ready for the surgery. Um, don't get cold feet. I think a lot of people get cold feet before surgery. If you do a lot of research on the surgery and know exactly what's gonna happen and answer all the questions uh, or have all your questions answered, um, mentally you just need to be in the right state. Um, and also what that means is, you know, being positive about it, like making sure that you have a good outcome. For me, um, I had a call with a subscriber and friend and someone who, you know, wanted to reach out to me and ask questions. You know, they said that I have a great attitude. And I think part of that is because I accept what's gonna happen with surgery. I understand it so well. I did a lot of research, a lot of reading. And like, what's gonna happen is gonna happen, but I, I'm pretty sure I did all my necessary steps to be in good hands. I made sure my parents were there to help me. Um, I made sure that I had all the necessary things I needed uh, and essentials, which is gonna be my next point. But I, I made sure I had all that ready. So that's kind of the emotional and mental part of it. But the other part of it is physical. So physically prepare for the surgery. You're gonna lose a lot of weight. You can't eat for a long time. I'm still not eating normal foods. 
like pizzas and and chipotle bowls and um go to chinese restaurants and having like crispy whatever stuff i don't even know i'm not yet there yet uh, i'll show you guys after this video and towards the end what i'm actually eating because i ended up cooking some things from my cookbook which i don't have here but my soft chew diet cookbook uh, i made a couple things and i'll show you guys that but not to stray from what i'm saying right now um, preparing physically, you lose a lot of weight after surgery. Your mouth is going to be wired shut. So prepare beforehand. Put on that extra weight. It goes away. It's not like you're going to put on the weight, have surgery, and you just don't lose it. It's like you're going to stay fat. No, that happens to nobody. Ask anybody that had jaw surgery, and I guarantee you they will tell you that they lost a lot of weight. Now, if you're super skinny and you're kind of near like your skinniest possible weight, like maybe you won't lose that much, but you still will lose some. It's probably maybe dangerous at that point. So for me, I'm about 180 pounds normally. I knew I was gonna have the surgery. I was hitting the gym five days a week, training really hard. I was eating two lunches, two dinners, almost three to 4,000 calories a day, and I got all the way up to 200 pounds. Was I happy with the way I, I looked? I mean, I was bigger, I was bulkier, I was stronger. Did I have a little bit of fat in my stomach and stuff? Yeah, but I knew that like in two weeks, then it came one week and then five days and three days, I was having jaw surgery and it's all gone. It's all gone. It, it, that stuff went away so fast and now I'm like already pretty lean and skinny. I'm down to 175, so even lower than the 180. Um, so prepare physically and mentally and emotionally. That's number four. The next and last thing I want to tell you guys you need to do, number five, prepare with all the essentials that you need, okay? Um, things like your syringes, your hospital will give you these. Things like, and I have a video on this, so if you want to go back and see what I thought you needed and, and all the items I got um, to prepare, this ice mask that I started my last video with. Um, this like sock thing that they gave me at the hospital that you could put bags of ice inside and then wrap around your, your jaw. So there are so many different things, tools, this is to cut rubber bands if your mouth, you know, if you're if you're feeling sick or something and you need you're having trouble breathing. So make sure you have the jaw recovery kind of essentials ready to go before surgery. You're gonna need protein shakes, you're gonna need chicken broth and soups, you're gonna need Gatorades and sodas are pretty good. They help soothe the throat right after surgery when it's sore because of the tubes down there, the anesthesia tubes. Um, yogurts, uh, drinkable yogurts maybe if you can get to that. Um, just a bunch of different kind of things that you're gonna need. You're, you're gonna need uh, maybe some cleaning tools, you're gonna need protein powders, you're gonna need baby toothbrush, you're gonna need, so there's a lot of things you're gonna need and just make sure that you're prepared for that beforehand so that after you have the surgery and hopefully somebody's helping take care of you the first week, you have all that stuff there. Um, milk, ice cream, so you can make milkshakes. Those are a really good treat and I loved having those at the end of the day. Uh, also help me kind of try and maintain some weight or try and maintain some fat because I was really losing it that fast. So I was having like four or five, four scoop, you know, giant milkshakes with milk, blending up and letting it melt a little bit so it's really liquidy and just drinking that whole thing. It's probably like a thousand calories. Did it matter? Not at all, zero. So uh, really tasty and uh, I still end up losing the weight. So make sure you have your essentials and uh, I think that's pretty much it. So I don't wanna make the video too long, but uh, those are my five most important things that you guys need to do before you're having surgery. Um, and I'd say one of the really good things you guys are already doing is watching this YouTube video, so I super appreciate that. Love when you guys comment, I already mentioned that, but um, we're almost at 100 subscribers too, so I'm gonna make a video for that. It's super cool thinking that I started with like 30 subscribers, and I know most of the people who are subscribed or jaw surgery patients and stuff like that. But when you go from 30 to 100, yeah, I'm so small, I'm not a YouTuber, but like if I imagine a room with 30 people and a room with 100 people, it's like a way big difference. And it's cool like being able to talk to all you guys. So uh, those are the most important things. It could be different for anybody else, but I think those are huge things. So um, I have a couple videos on that. Go back and check them out. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, my essentials video, how I mentally prepare for the, uh, the surgery physically, stuff like that. And uh, last thing I wanna show you though is the food I've been making. So let me show you guys the soft food uh, that I cooked up from the cookbook I have here, which I'm trying to find it, I can't find it. But I showed it to you last time. Okay, I just found it. So this book right here, the I Can't Chew Cookbook and shout out Diego, I know you commented on the last video. He uh, recommended this book and uh, I got it. So I made a couple things from it and they've been okay. They have been okay. Last video, I think might have been a little bit of a cheat for me. Eating that chili might have actually been, it, I didn't eat it and chew it hard, but that was probably on like the further end of like soft food. So things I had made, the first one of the things I made was a turkey and broccoli tetrazzini. I made, uh, 
Another thing which was cod, cheddar cod in the oven baked. And then I also made a broccoli and beef casserole. So this is what they look like. They, all the ingredients are, I'm sorry, most of the recipes in there you're gonna bake. Uh, that's really good because it gets put in the oven, it gets really soft, and it's easy to eat. So this is a, uh, the turkey and broccoli tetrazzini. Obviously it doesn't look as good because I've eaten most of it, but there's noodles in there, broccoli in there, cream and mushroom soup, and then lots of turkey. So um, it's pretty like a, much like a full kind of all around meal. And then the other thing I made was this. This was my um, beef and broccoli casserole. Now I put like breadcrumbs uh, on the top, which I think I would have omitted. They didn't actually turn out that good on the top, but you see in there obviously tons of broccoli and there's uh, beef in there. I also had a little extra turkey, so I ended up cutting up turkey really finely and throwing that in too um, for more protein. So those are the two leftover foods. The cod I ate, it was really cheesy and it's called cheddar cod, but it was a little milky. These things are kind of heavy. Um, they're a little like milky and heavy and like fatty when you kind of eat them They weren't as good as the spinach I made and the chili I made um, Those are both recipes that my mom has told me about and personally I like those better But again, this is a soft chew cookbook. So the foods maybe not as appetizing as the food I made um, That my mom told me so I also have other things I'm gonna make from the cookbook which is gonna be uh, this this is zucchini so I'm gonna make a zucchini au gratin and uh, make that in the oven so uh, I'm, I'm trying out the cookbook making a bunch of different things so far it's been okay the food has been okay um, but I'm gonna maybe just pick different ones or ones that I think are gonna be a little better or without as much kind of fatty things in them so it's kind of just up to me I might have just picked ones that were a little more heavy on the heavy side anyway guys Thank you so much for watching. Uh, appreciate your support and hope you liked this video. If you did, comment, like, subscribe. And uh, we're almost at 100, so let's get there. And uh, I'll see you guys next video.